Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer, Mark Sargent's here. It's the secret show. Let's be abnormal together. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Hello, how are you? I'm great. All of us watching live in the chat or at another time are all abnormal compared to normal society. And thank goodness. Are you drinking something? You can give us a toast to being abnormal. A toast to being abnormal. Uh, this is a red wine because uh, it's dark. It kind of matches everything it's that I'm going on. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, it's Why Wednesday. didn't you tell me uh, you were drinking? I would have got a drink. Maybe I would. Because uh, I, I just decided to. <laughs> well, I told the live chat, and those who are watching this at a later time might not have seen that. Well, actually, the live chat does run when a show plays. Anyway, uh, at one point, I messaged you on Skype, and I'm like, hey, what's up? Where are you? Because usually I'm late. This time you were late. You said, I'm cutting onions. It may look like I'm crying, is what you wrote me back on right. Skype. Right. And I, I thought that was like a euphemism for something like sad code. happening. And then right. you said, no, no, I'm really cutting onions for church with my mom right now so yeah yeah uh, there was a church dinner and i as you know i was a sous chef for several years and so uh cutting onions is one of the things i i will do you don't buy them in a jar already pre-cut right nope nope no i'm old school cutting them pre -cut up cut onions and pre-cut garlic bad news i went to a nice restaurant when i lived in new orleans one of those five-star restaurants yeah. and in order to get there because there's lots of old buildings in the french quarter one of the oldest parts of the entire united states walk through a back alley very scenic back alley and i saw the trash which is gross when it's hot in new orleans because you can smell it kind of like new york in the summer but mm. uh I saw the trash and saw what was in the wheelie bins, and they had uh, pre-diced garlic at this beautiful, supposedly elegant French restaurant. And I thought to myself, if you're too lazy to dice garlic, what else are you too lazy to do? And immediately I thought of that restaurant as uh, a one-star restaurant and never went yeah. again. No, I, I worked for a pretty cool place. It was called Cafe Langley, L-A-N-G-L-E. I, I saw it, didn't I? Didn't you show me Yes, you did. You thought it was still it? open, as a matter of fact. It's gone and, now. Uh, they closed the one of the owners uh, passed away recently, and uh, they were open, I think, since the late 80s all the way up until last year. And uh, I did the sous chef routine with a with a head chef named Mustafa. And it was an interesting kitchen. Uh, it was all Mediterranean, uh, lots of garlic, feta cheese, eggplant, hummus, hummus. Oh, mm. I can make still this day. The, the recipes for hummus and baba ganoush are burned into my head. I can make them. I can make them to taste on the fly. Love it. I love hummus. Baba ganoush, not so much. I like eggplant in general, but that's not, like, not my you, I don't think you've, I don't think you've had good baba ganoush. You haven't had mine. That's for I've sure. I've had it from all over the place. Oh, come on. What's wrong? Right. No, baba ganoush, there's, there's a little secret to it. And that is when you burn the eggplants on the grill, you leave a little bit of the skin, the burned skin. It gives it kind of an ashy, kind of a smoky. Smoky See, I don't like the smokiness. I don't also like the flavor of Chipotle. So I'm not a smoky person. Smoky flavor in things is not, it's not for me. Liquid smoke, don't like. Anyways. Note to self, Patricia, picky eater. Mm, no, I'm not really. I'm not. There's a few things I don't like. Um, anyway, well, you know, we're abnormal. That's the theme of today's show. We're all being abnormal together uh, as we uncover truth. And I appreciate everybody being here in the audience. And if you are watching this either live in the chat or at a later date, give the video a thumbs up. Mark's channel is in the description box. And, and um, oh, go ahead. Oh, by the way, I, I will be look. I now have the chat box because I've got a whole new setup, different computer, different monitor, different all this stuff. The agency gave me an extra budget this year oh, for God. 2019. <laughs> uh, I can now read the chat. Yes. So I've got the chat box running in the background. So when some guy says chef name was Mufasa, no, not African, Mustafa. That is Mustafa. the uh, one of the Turkish equivalents for John. There's a lot of Mustafas out there. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. So not Mufasa. All right. Thank you for that. Well, I've got the chat box up live as well, too. So uh, I do want to let people know what we're going to be talking about, aside from wine drinking, baba ganoush, hummus, and who knows what. We're going to be talking about flat earth and other associated um, topics that are abnormal to most people. So we're going to talk about the NASA Challenger disaster. And I say that word disaster with air quotes, okay? Right. It happened January 28th, 1986. We just passed the 33rd 
anniversary. So we're going to discuss that. And we're also going to talk about how clothing and shoe retailers Forever 21 and Nike are selling NASA branded items as the programming continues to crank up. We're going to talk about the uh, Flat Earth Conference in New Zealand, uh, the Question Everything Conference coming up next month, February 2019, both you and I are going to, and whatever else comes to mind. Got it. Yep. I've got, I've got several topics. I'll All right. Good, late. good, good. Let me go into the live chat and just say hi to people. Um, let's see. Oh, you know, um, I see who's been giving all the thumbs up. I mean, excuse me, thumbs down. I see a person who has a million troll channels has been in the chat. So who <laughs> is <we> it? <laughs> I don't want to give them any credit. No, no, no. Name, awesome. name this person, whoever this is, you should come up to the Northwest and visit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, the live chat will probably tell you who it is. All right, live chat, you do it for me. And, and tell us who the person you. is who's giving those and always does comes by with their multiple admitted sock accounts. This channel is also admitted buying subs. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to mention them. What, Simon Dan? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think that's admitted. Oh, um, oh sorry. He hasn't admitted it yet. Eh, you should fess up, Simon Dan. <laughs> Um, let's see. Let me say hi to those who are here, who actually are real people, not sock accounts. NASA lies about everything is here. And hello, Chris Van Matry. Hey, look, Mark Sargent's in the live chat too. Uh, John 1151 KJB says, hey, Mark and Patricia. That's a long name. Hello to Robert Day and Derek Story, who says London's hen's evening greetings. And scrolling down, we've got Saturn Machine saying, how could so many people come on here just to thumb down? And uh, the answer to that is it's a handful of people with multiple sock accounts. It happens. I don't care. And it doesn't make those people haters. It makes them fans. Show fans. If you'd like my autograph, just email me at mistier at gmail.com because you obviously love me or you wouldn't be here. And you love Mark too. Let's not, let's not forget Mark. Um, I've, saw, I've signed a few autographs. Don't know if I'm going to do many in 2019, though. You know, this whole life of glam and glitz. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's so yeah. taxing. <laughs> oh, yeah, By right. the way, I, I shout out quick to, well, obviously, <laughs> shout out to Ace McLeod, because, just because. Uh, but um, shout out to D Marble for, mm. for looking so gangsta in that latest troll video. I, I, have, to, I have to mention that was really cool. T Marvel's always on top of it, on top he of his game. Is, uh, <laughs> I was going to try to come up with some street saying I have no street credibility at all. So, uh, but it was an interesting troll video, and I won't say who else was in it. But the D Marvel part I thought was very funny. <laughs> Thomas Harlan is here too, and David King, and let me see, let me see, Karen B. Hello, and Exactly Random is here. I like that name. Martin Leadkey says I'm normal, not. <laughs> And we're so glad you're not normal, Martin. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been doing all the great things that you've done and will continue to do. Hello to Jason of the Disberry family and Steve Finnerin and Ginger Sugarbush. Hello, Perfect. space is fake. And uh, oh, Karen B asks, Mark, when are you going to cook her dinner? <gasps> is a romance uh, brewing so here on this channel? Little bit of a proposition there. Uh, I don't know. I might cook you dinner when I'm at the North Carolina conference if it ever gets announced. Wait, we're still North Carolina jogging conference. back forth. It's the, yeah, I know. There's a North Carolina what? conference that's separate from the LA and the Dallas and the Toronto. We'll talk about all those later. Oh wow! Uh, but there's Didn't know. There's, there's one that's going to be in North Carolina, and apparently I'm headlining it. Oh wow! And but but it hasn't been. Uh, we haven't gotten the formal details of it yet. Only it's going to be in Ash Asheville. Asheville. Yeah, Asheville. Yes, yeah. I've heard of it. Never been. So, uh, and that's Karen cool. lives out there. So. Oh wow. Let's, um, a few more shout outs. Steve Alves says, hi, everyone. Hello to Mr. Maddie Moses and Top Hill and Constance Bruns and scrolling down. Yep. You already shouted out Ace McLeod and uh, Danu Creed and Nora Noen's flower. Hi there. Scrolling her, her as well. Has signed my chest and it's like, okay, uh, with, a, <laughs> with a Sharpie or with wax? Ooh. Yeah. Mm, okay. What, you um, done, you've never done hot wax? No. No? Mm -mm. Mm. I'm very yeah. conservative. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, aside from casting spells. 
<laughs> Hello to Gunadu and Gabe Ramirez, Red Squirrel Whisperer. Wow, some new people here. And I hope I'm not naming some people's troll accounts. Hello to Effie Tang Clan. They always leave symbols everywhere they go. I appreciate you because at first I thought, what do those symbols mean? And now I realize you're just saying in your own way, hey, how's it going? I'm flat too. Hello to Method to Madness and Manny Pinocchio, Good Times for All, Amanda Effie Globe Denier, Epsom Vince, Louis T, Rob Kin, Flat Earth Sikar. Uh, did I say Robert Day? Maybe not. Flat Earth Trav, CVH, Gabe Ramirez, and uh, Sudu, um, Bear Alert Kurt. Hello. Um, Flat Earth Goes Viral.net says hello, Patricia. Hello. Flat Earth Outlaws. Hello to you. Hello to Brian Staveley and Ute. And let's see, D Black, who says love you too. Shana Honea. Hello. How are you? Hey to Taboo Conspiracy. By the way, a lot of these channels that I'm mentioning are channels if you're not subscribed to, what are you doing with your life? Um, let's see, Mr. Mensa is here too. And uh, Carrie Musgrave, hello. Space is fake. Gavin Moir. Mm -mm, I'm trying to scroll by names I've mentioned before. Hopefully I'm not going to miss anyone. Um, let's see. I'm Remember to support your wonderful host and hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for saying that in such a weird way. It um, wasn't, that was completely organic. That was, was not read from anything. Matt Sear Fogley, hello. Jaded Truth, hi. Critical Inception, that's a cool name, hello. Joe Rism Six, hello. And hey, Gary Heather is here on his other account, so hello to you. You don't have a wrench, but just imagine you do, because you do with your other account. And that's uh, Gary John, for those who, who don't know. Um, da, da, da. Mad Scientist is here. <laughs> Mad <laughs> cool Scientist. Name. But it's with C-Y-A-N-T-I-S-T. -I, -I, I don't know. Cyanide? I'm not quite sure. Um, Meredith Wilson says, new subscriber. Thank you so much. And hello, page 42. And Richard Gallantine. And new people stop coming in. <laughs> well, NASA look, fails. They're come in whenever. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah. We'll we'll do another shout out later. Yeah, NASA point. fails just came in and says there's more land. You know, there potentially could be more land. I'm 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 all about that. Possibilities. I don't know that there isn't, so I'm not gonna say that there isn't. Uh hello to Ben Taken Picks. Haven't seen you for a while. And uh Sudu is asking if we're drinking schnapps. No, but maybe I'll go get a drink while you fill us in on anything interesting that you've got. I'm putting you on the spot. Wait, what? I'm oh, putting me? you on the spot. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm going to go that... get a drink because, you know, you're drinking alone, and I don't want to subject not, you I'm to that. I'm definitely not drinking alone. There's tons of people in the chat, and there's you. No, no. I'm well, not, I don't I'm have a drink, alone. though, and I didn't what? know we were going to drink. What? No, I didn't know we were going to drink either. And in fact, I'm not drinking much. You're I'm not very little, social, having, actually. It was a it was a busy day, <laughs> and I just kind of wanted to wind down. Wine, W-I-N-E. Oh, I see what you did there. All right, you talk about something cool, and I will be back with something to drink very quickly. Don't leave any awkward pauses. All right. And don't say anything bad about me while I'm gone. As you guys know, Patricia uh, hates being, I heard left, that. <laughs> being left out. So... Okay, what am I going to talk about? The story we're going to talk about first is the article on um, Flat Earth and the crackdown by YouTube. So, And I won't be able to read this and look at the chat at the same time. Uh, we'll just pick one of the random ones because I want to clarify here. It's from Yahoo Finance. YouTube cracks down on Flat Earthers and 9-11 truthers. Uh, the article goes something like this. YouTube has bec uh, become home to thousands of alarming, alarmingly bonkers conspiracy theories from flat earth videos to many, many videos claiming 9-11 was a hoax. But the video service is now cracking down on conspiracy theories. They'll still be there, but they'll no longer be recommended by the site. In recent months, YouTube has faced criticism for foregrounding conspiracy theories in the wake of news events. YouTube said, and I quote, we'll begin reducing recommendations of borderline content and content that could misinform users in harmful ways, such as videos promoting a phony miracle cure for serious illness, 
claiming the earth is flat or making blatantly false claims about historic events like 9-11. We think this change strikes a balance between maintaining a platform for free speech and living up to our responsibility to users. YouTube claims that the move will affect less than 1% of videos. The misleading videos will remain on YouTube even after they are phased out from its recommendation list. And I believe that is that is the entire article. I, so, I gave that just in time. Yes. What do you what, what does chat think about that? And and again, I've got to clarify here because the rumor mill, as you know, is freaking rampant. You know, with with this, it's like, oh, they're going to pull down flat earth videos. They're going to pull down flat earth videos. No, they're going to. Uh, the thing is, is that flat earth has been recommended so heavily on the right hand bar of just about everybody's browser for the last several years that there's a whole bunch of people saying, oh, we're so tired of this. Can you recommend something else? Because you type in anything that's even remotely conspiracy-based, like JFK or Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or Sandy Hook or Boston Mommy, flat, you're going to get three or four Flat Earth videos. It's, it's just going to be in there. The question is why. It's because they're popular. And don't forget, uh, YouTube is conflicted in this case. because They love you, us because we bring them money. We do. YouTube is a... Let's, let's clarify here. YouTube is a television network. No different than ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, or Fox. Uh, the only difference is they have way more programming and way more, uh, the, the users are instant. You don't have to wait for a show. Well, there's they, also independent things happening on YouTube as opposed to you know Fox or any other channel on mainstream TV. So. And YouTube is still the flavor of the month and sort of the flavor of the year in this case. And so people watch a lot of YouTube videos and they watch a lot of flat earth videos. And every time they do, YouTube makes money. So they're kind of in a, they're trying to please both sides without saying they're going to, you know, they, they can't cater to us and they can't even mention that they're catering to us. All they can say is, and if you, you know, you read between the lines, we're going to start phasing out recommendations. You know, they're not going to tromp all over free speech, but at the same time, uh, they, they don't need, they don't need to promote us as much as they used to because we're already everywhere. We're in so many demographics, we're so many nooks and crannies that it's not going to hurt them in any way, shape, or form. And just to, one more thing to clarify, it is not going to hurt us when you type in Flat Earth into the search engine. That is not going to change. You're still going to get a ton of Flat Earth videos. It's just if you type in JFK, you're probably going to get less Flat Earth recommended to you on the right-hand side. There you go. Well, if they wanted us gone, they could there have done would it. be no Flat Earth videos on YouTube. Exactly. But what exactly. they have done is made sure the debunking videos come up first. But um, well, we'll work but our way through that. that is, it's not even that they're promoting the debunking videos, is that those networks, you know, those channels. In fact, if you go in and type in, you've seen it as of like, I don't know, this morning. Hang on one second. Or you get a Wikipedia or Encyclopedia Britannica no, 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 article no. linked to telling you the real story. No, 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 no. Nope. I'm just going to do YouTube and then I'm going to say uh, Flat Earth. By the way, I made myself a very quick greyhound, organic grapefruit juice, and vegan Stoli vodka. Cheers to all. Looks Cheers. huge. It, it's so weird. Whenever I put something close, it just looks like this thing is the yeah, size it looks of a like, swimming it looks like pool. You're drinking a punch bowl. It's really small. <laughs> anyway, cheers. Cheers. So, uh, let, yeah. So, when you type in flat earth right now and you don't set any filters, you see, obviously, National Geographic up at top with half a million hits, followed by ABC News, which was a reprint, which is interesting because it says it's only seven months ago, but it's showing Raleigh from the end of 2017. Uh, Big Think, Engineering Explained, Ars Technica, Star Talk, which is Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, BuzzFeed, Multiplayer, Tech Insider, BBC, Big Think Again, Mashable, This Morning, which is Britain, Vice News, CBS News again, Comedy Central, BBC, and so on and so on. So yeah, they're all the major players, but remember, they also... They're all verified channels, all of them, and verified channels get higher pecking order. So they didn't. They don't have to write special algorithms to bump them up. They've got they've got a lot of hits. Although there are smaller channels that have bigger flat Earth hits, you combine what they've got with uh, their verified status, and yeah, the the top twenty have not changed in some time. Here's something I've been thinking about. Many of us, people have written me and asked, why are flat earth channels that I've watched all this time getting less views than they did maybe a year or so ago? Right. And it's and they asked me if, is it because flat earths become 
irrelevant or less popular. No, it's that there's yeah. more channels. Yeah. So therefore the viewer um, or listener has many more options when before uh, there would be one live stream and that would be the only game in town. Now, right. I don't know what's happening now. There's probably multiple and we've got 207 people watching, which isn't yeah. so bad. No, no, we no. Flat Earth is is monstrous. I can't keep track of all the channels that are involved now, both pro and con. There's, and we've sometimes seen a, I find channels that have been around a long time, and I think, how did I not know they existed? They're great. Right, right. Or yeah. how did I not know they existed? They're wretched. <laughs> yeah, there's those too. Uh, and and of course, uh, who's been taking center stage for the last oh three four weeks, and that's been Owen Benjamin. Yes. Uh, even though he has, really hasn't dug into Flat Earth, and he still has not talked exclusively to anybody in the Flat Earth community. You know, I've, I've, I've talked to a whole bunch of people and bunches of, I don't know if you have, have reached out to him. Oh, yes. Remember, because he lives not far from here. And he's like, look, man, you want to come up? Well, you know, we'll hang out, drink some of those weird beers you have. Or, I, you know, I... Claw, I'm more... I think, or something? The what? A claw beer, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I don't know anything white, about white beer, claw. so... Bear, it's not bear claw, it's... Yeah, it's a yeah, whatever doesn't matter. He, but the point is, he's he's close, and so I reached out. I said, "Look, if you want to sit down, it was really soft, you know, soft sell." It's like, look, more than happy to work with you. But I know a lot of other people have as well, and he has not done it yet for whatever reason. And I, I will like I was talking to Marty Leeds last night, and I said, I think it's mostly because he's trying to adjust to his new life, which is he has really. I won't say he's burned bridges while leaving Hollywood. But he's certainly thrown a bunch of road flares everywhere, you know, indicating where he's going to burn them before it's over. And uh, it's that can't be easy for him. You know, yeah, he's still doing stand up gigs and, and doing a few things. He was just in Vancouver where, where he met up with uh, Fatter, Flatter Thocker up there. Well, wait, did he even talk to him? I didn't see the whole thing. Did he get a chance to you see him? What? I'm going to have to check into that. Because uh, he went to the concert. He was there like filming the whole thing. He's also doing other things with his life, um, including building fences, uh, considering when he'll be planting vegetables and how that's going to happen. Right. So he's got a really full life going on. Right. So. Well, again, I, I'm happy for the guy. You know, he, he wears his soul in his sleeve. And, uh, you know, watching him go through the transformation has been fantastic. And he's inspired a whole bunch of people. And he, he's about as real as it gets. I, I don't know if he's quite quite there in a stable happy place yet but he's working through it and for, for he's that funny. I, I give him he's very funny well he's yeah. a comedian and he's really talented as a musician as well and yeah. when it comes to being a man head of household that sort of thing he ranks really high he's uh he often talks about his family and how he takes responsibility and is a classic old school man which is what i admire um because i'm kind of an old school woman um you know what I'm trying to say. I traditional, do. Traditional, I guess, in many ways. But also not traditional. Hey, you know, um, I'm a flat earther. In case You're you in know. flat earth, right. <laughs> and all these other things we talk about. And you actually own a cauldron, which is weird. You mean this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know the <laughs> boil, toil bubble, and trouble toil and trouble cauldron. You know that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. But okay. She does. No, she I don't. Absolutely does. No, no, I don't. Cheers. Out of my giant, I swear to goodness, this is a giant punch bowl. And I made it too strong, too much vodka. So I will oh, yeah, become obliterated. Well. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm only drinking wine. That's a little easier to manage than. Well, I will only have this. A lot of times when I've had drinks with you, I've brought the bottle and the mixer out. And this time, that's it. Oh, it's so strong. Yeah, well, exactly. Sorry. If, anyway, kids, for those of you watching, it's a body weight ratio to alcohol. And, and since Patricia weighs all of, I don't know, a buck oh three dripping wet, uh, 107. Tea, in about 45 minutes, she's going to start slipping up. Yeah, well, that happens when I'm sober. Yeah, well. is it, what's, <laughs> what's new in the videos? Today? <laughs> I've got all these bright lights around me and they shine on my face and, you know, my face is sort of shiny as it is, not oily, just the kind of skin I have. Um, and you'll see, I'll start to get shinier and shinier. You know how people do. People are different ways when they drink. Camera a, two, dim the lights 20%. <laughs> no, people are have different personalities when they drink. I just get happier, I guess, and giddy and kind of dumb, but you know, fun. And other people get angry and cry or whatever. I'm, I'm not that type, so no worries. No worries. Okay, so the challenger. 
couple days ago. It was the 33rd anniversary of the uh, quote unquote the what disaster. 33rd, oh, believe it or not. And you know, Illuminati confirmed. Yeah. Whether you believe in flat earth or globe, it was a terrible tragedy. <laughs> Think about it. Where were you in uh, the winter of 86? I remember exactly driving my car in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Don't know where I was going. Heard it on the radio, listening to my dad's AM radio station, AM 1360 WKMI. And I was driving and heard it. And I thought to myself, how sad, first of all. Then I thought, I wonder if they knew they were going to die. Did it hurt? Did they die immediately? Did they suffer? These were the things I was thinking. And that's what they want you to think. That's what they want you to think all about the pain and suffering and sadness when it comes to things like Sandy Hook or any of these other events. They play upon your emotions. They use children or they use, you know, um, Sally Ride, you know, somebody there who's an educator, just um, they use a teacher, they something to make you feel feet to give you the feels. And when you've got emotion tied in with an event, there's hardly any way to break that programming. It's true. It's true. Except for uh, alcohol. <laughs> I was drinking my way through my first year of university. I was 17 years old. And I remember I was in the ROTC building when, of course, you know, everybody in ROTC, the military just froze when that thing happened because NASA is military. And so when it blew up, it was like, yeah, they just shut down. They were just, everyone just sat down and was glued to the sets. Uh, most of the university students, it's like, it was something, it's like, yeah, yeah, sort of interesting. But in the 80s, a lot of the younger people really weren't into the space programs. It's like, we didn't really even care that much. It was like, oh, it was interesting. And, but the, I, I hate to say this because it sounds trivial and it sounds um, too, like I'm like make, making light of it. But the only thing that really affected us, and you remember this, was that MTV had to change its freaking intro to the channel because you remember they went initially that you had the original mtv with the astronaut on the moon go figure right with it with the flag and they changed the mtv graphic well in the early 80s you know or say in the mid 80s they changed that to a space shuttle intro where the space shuttle was launching and then they went on the moon and then there was a flag but in the um uh, sense of good taste they pulled it and they never brought it back so the space shuttle intro for MTV was permanently removed because of the Challenger disaster. I asked in the live chat, where were you when the Challenger blew up? Because something did blow up, you know? I mean, people go, it didn't really happen. Well, a lot of people saw something blow up. Oh, no, it blew it up, a, no, no question. Right. I mean, right. the, the rocket went up and it blew up. Were there astronauts in it? No. No, there weren't. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, there was an interesting article uh, that I found that was on CNN, and I don't know if you caught this, uh, but I've got it right here. If I can find it, there it is. Uh, which was, and I, I didn't realize why. It's like I, I couldn't figure out why, why, are, why are you even talking about it, right? Well, because it's 33 years ago. You've got to acknowledge it. If you're in into that system, you have to acknowledge 33 when it comes by, right? And so the article is in CNN. You can look this up. Son of Space Shuttle Challenger Commander remembers tragedy 33 years ago. Hmm. And it's, for, uh, it's by uh, Tom Patterson, the, the article. Now, here's the interesting part, right? The guy, the astronaut's son, that is, um, the, the father was Lieutenant General, and I forgot about this. You're either, a you're either a colonel or higher in the Air Force when you get into space, right? And in this case, he was Lieutenant General Richard Scobie. Does that ring any bell to you? He was yes. the guy, he was one of like the picks in the Challenger before and later picks. Yeah. Uh, white uh, guy with kind of buggy eyes. Yeah. I think Cows in Trees is the name of the company the, that he runs today. Yeah. Yeah. And he was the one that, that, that one of those uh, images that really convinced a lot of people because. Yeah. It's the same guy. I mean. Yeah. It's absolutely the same guy. In fact, when you're looking at the, the pick with him and his son, you scroll down below uh you can see oh yeah there there's the guy now it doesn't the the pick with his son beneath it doesn't exactly look like it's it looks like a church pick more than anything mm -hmm. but it looks photoshopped but when you're looking at it you're you're going okay you because you don't want they don't show any any images of his son now because his son would be his son looked like he was about 10 or 12 in that image which means he's what 
45, 46, something like that. Now they don't show any, 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 any images of him at all. Don't really talk that really that much about him. Only that he's really sad. And, you know, he acknowledges and all my father was a hero, that, that sort of thing. Uh, but I really love, I would really love to find that guy and hand him a pick of the, um, of, of, you know, the, the later shots of his father, you know, doing the whole co corporate thing and say, oh, really, this isn't your father because it looks <laughs> just like him. And what if it were, he's like, my, that's, that's my dad. And then he's the one who busted the whole thing wide open. Uh, Wouldn't it's, that be cool? I love for somebody to find him because as you know, it's one of the weaknesses in Hollywood, which is out of all the things we've gotten really good at some stuff, right? Uh, you know, some special effects, but we're, we are still not that good with physical makeup making someone younger look older we are we we can we can do the older younger thing with cgi but making somebody look older that is still tough you've seen it right or it's like you take somebody who's 30 and you like make them 65 and they they just the the wrinkles and everything just don't look natural things don't move you know no they don't they it doesn't can't. move it's stiff it's and it's aesthetics like, oh, it yes. look, i mean yeah you look older but it doesn't but it but you can guess or you're looking and going oh it's not really realistic but okay we'll go with it there's right. even apps. There's apps that you can use with your phone that you can download to make yourself look uh, like a different gender and uh, also sure. make yourself look younger or older. I've done my face to make myself look younger and it doesn't do too much except make like my skin redder, you know, pinker. But when I make it older, I look like they just drew lines on my face. It right. doesn't really make you look older. The, the, the image of Richard Scobie going from the Challenger mission to, you know, very recently looks completely natural. Yes. Like you're, you're looking at them going, that is not Photoshop. That is some, I've never even seen people in Photoshop do it realistically. Forget about the Hollywood makeup. Find me a Photoshop image where you made somebody young, old. And make it look natural, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, you where you look and it's like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely that guy 30 years later where the wear and tear is is perfectly organic. And so anyway, um, the, the reason why they, they ran that story is because the younger Scobie was. Or he is he's working for NASA now. Oh, really? Yeah. Like father like he, son. Yeah, from mechanic to astronaut. You know, that was that was the father. I really should send you this article. You guys should look I'd it like up. To I mean, the, it. the image does not look real. Um, for uh, those of you who are on Facebook, I know you're not, Mark, but for those of you who are on Facebook, there are different um, uh, community groups that are on there and also businesses. And uh, Cows and Trees is an advertising agency, by the way, that SCOBY runs. Um, and <laughs> it's funny because it's in Chicago, Illinois. And it, for any company, you can write a review. And for Cows and Trees, somebody wrote the following review. Cows and Trees is run by a dead man from the Space Challenger disaster. <laughs> Way to go, because we know whoever wrote that, that review, they're with us. Nice. <laughs> that, there was an, the, the, here, I want to read just this part from the article. Uh, the future of American space ex exploration. Appropriately, SCOBY's command will inter indirectly intersect with NASA later this year. Air Force Reserve units are scheduled to provide support for the first astronaut launches from Florida since the demise of the shuttle program in 2011. Uh, the astronauts are scheduled to blast off from Florida later this year to test two different capsules for human spaceflight, Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Dragon. And uh, assigned to those missions will be Air Force Reserve Guardian Angel pararescue teams, along with the 920th Rescue Wing to respond to possible emergencies, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the, the two points I want to make there was, one, most Americans don't even know that the space shuttle program was shut down eight years ago. Shut down entirely. There are no space shuttles as of eight years ago. People, we see space shuttles in movies even this day. And, and if you believe Elon Musk, you're going to have to reinvent the space shuttle program, even though the space shuttle program was supposedly low Earth, Earth orbit, and he's going to send people to the moon in one of these space shuttles. Um, and the second thing is that um, ever since they canceled the space, the, the space shuttle program, we haven't been launching out of the United States. Right. We've been launching out of Russia. And we pay them. We pay them. And we land. We and land. The supposedly is crazy. In, in Russian airspace, it's like, okay, so every story you see, there's conflicts in stories here. They want to amp up the drama. It's like, oh, Russia, we could be going to war with them. At, at, Russia, at any time. China, they're going to get us. Oh, wait, we're working with them on the ISS. 
Yeah, we're launching from their airspace and returning to their airspace. So how much of an enemy could they be? I remember the ABC interviewer, the the on-air talent, she was giving me grief and because she said, you don't think that Russia's our enemy? I go, do you? I go, we, we've never squared off with them, ever. I go, look, I get it. I, You know, I, in fact, it was funny. I watched the original, you, you're old enough to remember this, even though I know you're like, what, 39? Which is the um, <laughs> there you go, and getting younger every day. Mm. The uh, the more I drink, the better I look, or something like that. <laughs> wow, that is that's a t shirt, that's true. The um, which was I watched the original Red Dawn from you know the early 80s with Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen and um, uh, Aaron Gray and you know, all, all these 80s people, right? And I'm watching this, I'm, and you watch it now. Seriously, I challenge to anyone out there, watch Red Dawn again. Oh, my Lord. That was one of the biggest pieces of pro propaganda I've ever seen, which is, you know, Russia has basically invaded the United States uh, with the help of South American countries and are, you know, killing people, you know, just right and left and, and take over Colorado. You know, they come in from the north and the south. And it's like, yeah, in the 1980s, I get it, right? The Cold War. Get it, Ronald Reagan, you know, oh, the Soviet Union. Look, it's 2019. Nothing ever happened. So don't you you can't play that record that many times. It's just people are brainwashed. Yes, you can. And that's what they do. All of these lies they tell us, they 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 twist it a little bit and repeat it in a different way, and people just lap it up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, a little quote. Wolverines. Yeah, that was the mascot of the Colorado school, which which was invaded. Uh, but come on, the Soviet Union fell. They're gone. The USSR is no more. So now what, what do you got left? We're, we're not going to war against Ukraine or something, Stan, what, you know, fill in whatever the blank Stan at the end of it. Russia? No. It, it's like we, we've taken Putin and it's like, well, he's obviously an evil dictator. It's like, really? Time really? Magazine took Putin's face and blended it with Trump's face to make this new person. Right. I mean, that pretty much on a subtle fashion says that we are, we're one in the same in a way. And, and the Democrats to this day, you know, I know they're trying again. Meaning you know, we're I not, vote, I don't vote. I don't, I'm not Republican or Democrat, never voted in my life, but Democrats to this day swear that Trump won because the Russians hacked the system. That's just a bunch of like, you know how we have space programming. That's political things are real programming. I don't know what you call it, but yeah, voting matters programming. I got to, you know, I I think I told you last time that uh, I watched Michael Moore's latest movie, Eleven Nine. Not to be oh, I didn't with see his, that one. With his, oh, you really should watch it. Yeah. Seriously, you really, really should watch it. Uh, and not to be confused with 9-11, Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9, 9 one uh, And he literally in the first 10 minutes of that movie, he totally blames the Russians uh, and says, oh, yeah, the Russians did it. But then at the end, it was weird. Do you know who he, you know, because he he likes to make connections. Do you know who he blamed more than, than that when he got, when it came down to it? No. Gwen Stefani. Okay, this sounds like something I don't want to see. It sounds utterly ridiculous. No, 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 no. It's, it's an interesting story. And that is, seriously, if you guys haven't watched 11 9, you really should watch it. By the way, um, they or... say Gwen Stefani is a man. So maybe that is no, 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 no. to this. <laughs> Gwen Stefani has aged very, very well, and and she's great lover. Right. But uh, no, it was because the the rumor was is that he was mad that she was making more money doing the Voice, I believe, than he was doing the Apprentice, and so he hired a whole bunch of uh, I won't say crisis actors, actors. You know, he hired people at fifty bucks a pop to to do these rallies for him in the lobby of the building to try to get more money. Right. And then he held, and then he held like this fake press conference and he was railing against the, the network and they fired him because of it. And by that time he had already, he paid for two rallies in like these state fair stadiums. Right. And a lot of people showed up, a huge amount of people showed up and that's where he got the idea where he goes out there and, and he's like, and you know, he never stood in front of that much of a live audience that was there just for him. And, and they said, you know what, let's see, you know, see how far we can run with this. So yeah, they, they it tied back to the original because he wasn't getting paid as much as a woman on the same network. And wow. uh, it was interesting. But anyway, I highly recommend it again, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it's an interesting watch. 11, nine, isn't that what 11, nine. At least the first half hour of it. And when he goes into the whole Flint, Michigan, 
water treatment facility stuff right. that gets a little tired uh, and goes into gun control that gets a little old because he's done that forever and ever. But the, the Trump part was very, very interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm not a fan of his, although I used to be oh, I'm not either. all of this awakening happened, but yeah, I would imagine it would be interesting. I, it's always I nice to see what people think. Even if I lost respect for the man when he did that ambush interview on Charlton Heston during, uh, Columbine, the, the Col bowling for Columbine movie. Yes, I where, have that one, you know, yeah. that was when Heston was just towards the end. He really wasn't doing the whole, you know, from my cold dead hands, <laughs> you know, routine anymore. And, uh, it, and it was bad because because Heston should have had somebody buffering that interview. And Michael Moore was, you know, I mean, Charlton just wasn't just wasn't there. He just didn't. And sometimes I think Michael Moore, Charlton Heston, all of that is just a psyop. All of that's just a psyop. The Gwen Stefani story, all of these things are just put into public consciousness to uh, control the narrative and make people look over here when the real action's over there. I don't well, trust anything ever at all. I, I think there's there's a little Except bit of truth vodka. in this, that. <laughs> no, no, I do think there's truth in some things, but anything can be spun. Right. And whether or not the motivation, I mean, look, the inspiration comes from somewhere. And once the inspiration starts, then it's like, OK, now we can control it. Now we can turn it in a certain direction. And uh, I mean, let's face it. Trump was it, the the first honestly, the first 15 minutes of it was hilarious because they were talking. They were, they were showing the montage of all the analysts saying that there is no way. And I mean, it didn't matter what side you were on. Nobody thought that he was going to even do anything. And then it wasn't even close. It wasn't even a horse race. So what's that tell you exactly? Does it tell you that your vote matters? None of your Democrat, apparently. Anyway, well, sorry. we're talking about the Challenger quote unquote disaster and the 33rd anniversary of said event. And like I said earlier, whether you're a globe believer or a flat earther, it was a tragedy. And uh, we do know the names of those who supposedly perished in this event. But did you know we should have an echo on that. Did you know? No, no. Uh, did you know that Sesame Street's big bird almost was on board? It's true. He was supposed to be a passenger on this the, the, the challenger. Actor, the actor yeah. and the costume or the just the costume? The inside the feathered suit. Really? Carol Spinney. She'd been invited to join the challenger mission, but it didn't work out. Now, we all know that Sesame Street I mean, I was shown it. They wheeled a big TV in in the 70s into classrooms and they would show us Sesame Street. I mean, that's how they did it back in the day. Now, I'm sure everything's completely different, but one of those big box TVs on wheels, they show all of the programming on it. And they showed us Sesame Street, probably when the teacher needed a break. But we know that Sesame Street has been used for all sorts of space programming, DITRH's channel and other channels, Five Arts Liberalis, who's here in our live chat. Hi, DITRH and Five Artists. Thanks both of you for being here. But um, yeah, uh, Sesame Street's part of the whole programming of space. And yep, they used that. They used uh, the the idea that the, the character inside the big bird suit was supposed to be aboard the Challenger. Like It just makes it seem more real that way. Of course. Of course, and and well, look at all the stuff they've done in the ISS. I mean, they they try to stay as current as possible, even to the point where if you believe the narrative, they have all the jerseys for every NFL team up there, so that they can flash them when the playoffs. So it's like, oh yeah, here's who we're rooting for. It's like, really, you shipped up all the jerseys for all 32 teams and footballs and all this other stuff, even though the the cost for each ounce. Of anything you send up there is thousands and thousands of dollars. Is the NFL compensating you for this, or is you just doing this because it's cheap? Because you're not actually up there. Yeah, it's such a joke, and people love it. They love the sports jerseys and the gorilla suit. I don't mean people like us. The gorilla suit was ridiculous. Yeah, well, that they're pushing to new levels of ridiculousness all the time, and I yeah. think they're whoever they is. Let's say powers it should not be, as I always say, are just sitting back really literally laughing. What are they gonna buy next? Let's try this, I'll never buy it. Let's go with it. I'll yeah. bet you $5 million, let's shake on it. And then All, boom, there we go. <laughs> although SpaceX did not do so well with the, the Tesla car. I yeah. mean, it did not get a lot of traction to where the, the Justice Department even ran a story afterwards saying that that Elon should have never even let allowed that footage to be out there. You can't get traction in space. 
Uh, well, yeah, but no, that, sorry. <laughs> uh, in fact, I was thinking of, of using the, the, the Elon Musk image, you know, some of that footage in, in some of my presentations, but mm -hmm. it's been so overplayed nowadays. I don't think it needs to be said. It's like, look, it's just, it's just not. It won a flatty for NASA's or NASA slash any space agency's biggest mistake, which oh, yeah. is the it, event period. It was horrible. Absolutely. In fact, we haven't heard from Elon recently. He's dating a woman named Grimes, G-R-I-M-E-S. That's her stage name. I don't know her real name. She's some sort of musician. Gothy Rocky kind of looking chick. No idea. Yeah, I don't care. So, yeah, either way. If, if I ever get the chance to... Punch him in the face? Throw him down an elevator shaft. <laughs> oh, okay. With it. I absolutely will. <laughs> Uh, I want to hello. Say, I, I want to hello. Okay, me saying I want to hello. The sign of drunkenness beginning. I want to hello. Now I want to say hello to Geo Shifter, who's in the live chat. Geo Shifter, where have you been? Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Um, he's got one of the most unique voices within the flat Earth community. Once you've heard it, you'll never forget it. Yes. Have I heard it? Of course you have. You'll find him in the chat. Click on his name, you'll find his channel. You're probably already subscribed. I probably already. Yeah. Well, I know I've subbed to it, but. he's He created the Flat Earth Friends app. Oh. You're probably on that. Um, or maybe you're not. Chris Topher in the live chat said, I was in high school when the Challenger blew up. He said, we all watched it blow up live. Trauma slash fear-based hoax learning for kids. Yeah. I wasn't scared at all. That was the weird part. It was like, uh, you know, again, because you probably I thought it was cool. <laughs> well, no, no. It's kind of like, you know, like any kid, you know, they're so distracted. Look, it was university. I was out of my mind at the time. I was going out oh, drag. But at the same time, I wasn't, you know, it didn't impact anything, anything I was doing with the exception of the MTV logo. That was it. I mean, how did it affect anybody, any kid in the 80s? It didn't. It just made me sad. That didn't even make me sad because I didn't know any of the hype going up into it. I didn't know there was a teacher on there. I didn't know any of the the seven people uh, that were holding micro. I'm sorry, motorcycle helmets in that uh, in that image. Yeah, literally motorcycle. That helmets. I that I didn't know until much later because I you've heard me say it's like oh yeah motorcycle helmets because you know it's too bulky you got to get them all in frame it looks it looks good in the shot and then when I saw the 80s footage of inside the space shuttle launch I'm going. Wait, they're actually using motorcycle helmets. The thing Wait. is that back then we were so unaware that we just we, we did not they know. Showed, nobody. Showed they could have put actual fish bowls on the heads they of astronauts have. and we'd be like, oh yeah, that's what helmets look like. They could have. And mostly because- Even with they, fish inside swimming around, we'd be like, there, yeah, okay. There were no reruns. Unless you had a VCR and you were recording oh. all of this on special channels, you were not watching it again. And even if you did, you're not sharing it with your friends. The internet was a long way off, at least 10, 12 years away. Check this out. The Chernobyl accident happened in 1986, April 26th. And uh, I remember hearing about that around the same time. And Ute, who's in our chat, says at primary oh. school, I remember Chernobyl happening Chernobyl. the same year. And Chernobyl is not what we've been told either, because you go and look now what's happening there, and it just looks like... Uh, Everything's living. Cats are living. Trees are living. There's no five-headed dogs or anything like that. So, boy, we've been lied to on such a huge level to the point where alcohol's probably healthy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, which reminds me of every you and you you know this. I mean, when you see story, and people should have suspected this anyway. Because if you watch the news for long enough, you start seeing patterns in stories. And eventually, at least a couple times a year, you'll see a story that says, this particular food is good for you. This particular food may be bad. You know, chocolate may be good for you now. Soy, good one day, horrible the next. It, exactly. How, why this cholesterol is now bad. Why this cholesterol is now good. And you're going, okay, you got to look into it a little deeper. Why are those stories being run? And that is because, well, you've got an industry that has some investments in it. And they hire that particular university team and they tell them, hey, spin it in a particular way. And they say, oh, no, scientists, they have integrity. They'd never succumb to that. It's like, of course they would. Scientists need Porsches too. 
All right, they're gonna do <laughs> whatever the money tells them to do. Scientists have midlife crises and need poor. They do. <laughs> if you need a red convertible, hey, by all means. Not just doctors and lawyers. <laughs> exactly. Who's it? Who's it hurting to say that chocolate may be fine for you if you have two ounces before bed? By the way, I think chocolate, supposedly dark chocolate, is good for you. Yeah, but how do you know that? Last that's one I of those check, stories. check your watches, everyone. No, no, seriously, that's one of those stories. We've heard, I've heard this too. It's like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, if it's that dark, if it's that heavy cacao version, mm -hmm. 90, 70 to 90% cacao. Oh, and then too much cacao will give you heart palpitations and you're going to die. So, yeah. you know, it's amazing any of us are still alive, really. Everything in moderation. Yes. Well, Period. except moderation. Well, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Drink yeah. responsibly, America. <laughs> the uh, no, 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 everything in moderation, of course. I mean, we we make mistakes and we correct as many as we can. I uh, remember the uh, the major f drug companies. Cocaine used to be sold in drugstores. Yeah, it used to be in Coca Cola. Therefore, the name. Yeah. Oh, I, I told you this story, didn't I? Uh, that when I was in uh, Boulder, one of our companies. Uh, it was R.R. Donnelly, if I'm not mistaken. They, one of their products was they made high fructose, 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 yeah, fructose, I, fructose, we know what whatever. They you made might the be syrup. right on the pronunciation. They, they made the, the syrup for Coca-Cola. And of course, you know, I'm you're talking to them because you're working through the tech support issues and you got some downtime. It's like, yeah, I remember, you know, you guys used to put cocaine in, in Coke back in the day. And he goes, what are you talking about used to? I go, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, we still use coca leaves, even now. And I go, what? I go, what? And he goes, yeah, but it's in trace amounts. It's in, it's just below the FDA's. Oh, so it's just enough to get people addicted because I know people who aren't involved in any of the awakening like we all are. And I go places with them and say, well, they always order Diet Coke. And I say, don't order that. It's highly addictive. And they're working on their weight. And I'm like, it's going to actually cause you to gain weight. It's got some chemical reaction within the body. And it's so addictive they can't stay away from the diet coke, the diet crack. Well, and, and because it's really got cocoa leaves in it and trace amounts. Yeah, Not yeah. Even well. now, um, the can I look yep. that up? I mean, are you one hundred percent on that? I uh, I doubt if you're going to find it on the internet. Look, I heard it from the horse's mouth. I mean, this guy was like working in that that particular building. He goes, absolutely. In fact, he went on to say because I he goes, look, it's below the FDA's minimum for for you know anything it's like less than tra less than a percentage of one percent right he goes so he goes we don't get in trouble of course and we, you know, everybody knows everything about it i go what do you mean he goes well because we do this the residue that we that we have from the coca leaves is a low-grade cocaine and we accumulate a lot of this stuff and we have to put it in a vault and the department of justice comes in and takes it every so many months from from the uh, facility because we can't use it. Technically, it's it, they they have cocaine on site. Now, it's not you know it's not pure. It's not Bolivian flake or anything like that. But it's still you know it's 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 something that could could be actually sold on the street. So yeah, isn't that weird? It but, is weird. And again, it's one of those little things. They don't have to tell people because the gov because it's below the government standards of the, of them telling it. Why offers that? Why offer that information up to people? The government, it's its not enough to get us in trouble. Therefore, we don't have to tell you. We need to be playing right now White Lines by Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, look it up. <laughs> We're old. You might not be. Oh, how about, uh, no, is White Horse? No, that's, Horse is heroin. Yeah, exactly. Well, heroin used to, was a thing for a long time. Back before there was opioids, I mean, people, you could buy opium at the drugstore. In fact, all of the things that are banned now are things that you could buy at a drugstore yeah. or, you know, pharmacy uh, previously. The uh, only thing that came back finally was the stuff that you could, and you still can't. And that is the, the it still comes down to the lawyers. And that is you can't legally sell something that you can OD on because the OD. You can drink several gallons of water and kill yourself. But they sell well, water. Yeah. I mean, you could drink, technically you could drink yourself to death with alcohol poisoning, but it's a lot. I mean, no, but you want to, you want to no. OD on crack. That doesn't take much. Uh, and you can't OD on marijuana. I, I just I don't care what anyone says in the chat. Uh, you can't OD in marijuana. I mean, you're just going to pass out. I've watched people do it all the time. It's like you just smoke and smoke and you pass out and then you wake up. Uh, suicide by marijuana, really, really small. And violence due to the use of cannabis, never. No. So, no. but the other drugs, if-, if Video game playing, yes. <laughs> yeah. The, 
the the main drugs if they're destructive if they lead to destructive tendencies yes they will be illegal and they're never going to be legal but marijuana because it's but the stigma behind it the states were so resistant but now you know up here in washington and in colorado and all the other states look it's a massive tax revenue and that is you you want to in fact it was something yeah okay sorry let me get off on another thing this is just between me and you you rest people you don't have to listen which is uh and that was i watched uh patriot games the other day you know the old the harrison ford movie uh tom clancy the whole jack ryan story and it was about uh how the americans were trying to stop drug dealers the war on drugs that's basically the quintessential war on drugs movie was patriot games but when it comes down to it, you know, here we are 20, 20 years later after Patriot Games, and you realize that the war on drugs will never stop until people don't want drugs. The war on drugs has nothing to do with fighting drug dealers and Miami Vice and shooting down planes and submarines and, and Pablo Escobar and stuff like that. You've got to stop people from wanting the drugs. And since you can't, you know, people were, were, uh, were bound to our impulses. We're addicted to everything. Come on, let's face it. With the exception of you, you're not addicted to a lot of things except fashion and good taste. And cats. Uh, and cats. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of people that are addicted to a lot of things. I don't care if it's caffeine all the way up to heroin, right? Or whatever the new drug in the street is. Uh, they, they realize you can't stop people from doing that. So the only way to win the war on drugs is to make it legal. That's why they did it. Uh, so that, you know, the state gets their cut and people still get what they want and it's regulated and that's it. Uh, they're not gonna be able to do it with anything else. Uh, you know, they try to do it with opioids, but sorry, there's my little NBC, the more, you know, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Oh, flat, flat, flat earth and hot potatoes cares. <laughs> we do. We love you. Um, it's basically shoot them all and let God sort them out, legalize it all and let God sort them out. And by oh. the way, the, uh, kill them all and let God sort them out is the real quote. And that comes from a Roman Catholic abbot uh, that died in 1225. Believe it all. Believe that. Kill them all and let God sort it out. Even the Simpsons did shoot them all and let God sort them out. But that comes from a Roman Catholic abbot. And we still say it today. I think we should just legalize everything and people well, you sort can't. it out. I don't like laws. Unfortunately, you can't. And, and here's why. And again, it comes down to the lawyers which is let's say you and I started a company and we came out with a, a great version of heroin and it was legal for whatever reason, right? Eventually somebody ODs and crashes a car into a school. But you'd have to, if you were going to buy something, sign something that says I'm, you're not liable for blah, blah, blah. Then you're talking about registration and now all these things take a lot of time. Right. You know, uh, buying, buying a type of drug isn't like buying a gun, which is a whole other story. So I still say everything should just be available for anybody who wants it. It, it can and be. again, but, that but would there's make a there's society a society that was crazy. Maybe I don't. When, know. I don't like laws. when the lawyers got involved, it made things sticky. Meaning, uh, they again, how many times do we see on television? You know, um, uh, um, uh, closed court. You know, when you ever see somebody driving anywhere, it's like a professional driver on closed course. Do not right. attempt. Or even right. the globe for educational purposes only. There's that, always that something on there. The lawyers said, <laughs> the oh caveat. yeah, you know, somebody is, if they, if you don't, somebody's going to do something stupid and they're going to blame the fact that there was no warning notice. I mean, even it's the, oh my God, the stupid side mirrors, objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. How many people have been driving and you, you, you see that anytime you try to pass and then you just barely almost miss a car and uh or you just barely almost hit a car and you say to yourself wow that was closer than i thought says right. it on the mirror but you didn't pay any attention yeah. so well anyway. warren zevon lawyers guns and money from uh the album i used to have it 1978 album excitable boy lawyers guns and money i mean that's a very good song by warren zevon that pretty much sums up what we're talking about it's yeah. it's what it's all about they they changed the rules and they changed how the what the 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 term precedent and that is once a precedent is set then you have to make a warning for everybody otherwise you are liable to a lawsuit and that's it. Every corporation, the corporation has to protect itself. And therefore, if, you know, just the lawyer doesn't have to even do much. They just go to the company presidents of the board and say, you are, you are vulnerable in this area if you don't do this. And Karen so B's in the live chat and says, high fructose corn syrup has been renamed natural sweetener. Sure. That's nice. That's nice of them. 
Sorry, do you remember those commercials when they came out? Uh, it was hilarious, but had to have been at least six, seven years ago, where there were like women at a pool party with their kids. Yes, or people, a boy and a girl, or young man and young woman going on a picnic. And the yeah, woman schools like, the guy I, on the I, how high fructose corn syrup in this popsicle is bad for you. Yeah, it's like, really? Wh where'd you hear that? How do you know that? You know, it's like, wh where did you hear this, this fallacious rumor? <laughs> really? <laughs> and it's like, who, wh I wonder who's sponsoring that? Oh, I don't know, corn industry. Yes, exactly. Whatever. I get it. Mm -hmm. And and but even then, I, I can't blame them too much because we have a huge surplus in corn and we can't grow cane sugar here. Can't. We, we not not in the continental United States. You have to grow it over in Hawaii. Well, if you like Coca-Cola and you want to drink it and no one's gonna stop you, don't get diet coke. Don't even get regular coke. Try to find what they call Mexican Coke. It has actual cane sugar in it, not high fructose corn That's syrup. That's true. And it tastes good and it comes in a glass bottle. It's so if you school. like retro old school things or it's yep. something that you remember from when you grew up, that's what we had were glass bottles that you would return for 10 cents in Michigan anyway, uh, yeah. recycling kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah uh, try that. Try that Mexican Coke at least one time, even if you're not into it. Just try it and you'll say, wow, that's good. That's some good stuff. <laughs> Karen B says, she agrees with me, legalize everything. I think so too. Let people figure it out. If they're going to die because they do something stupid, or if they see a globe and think it's a real tool that shows the way our earth is shaped, they're just dumb. We don't need the stick that says for educational way. purposes only. That, yeah, that, that really not intended for educational use, for entertainment mm -hmm. purposes only. Uh, why would you put that sticker on the bottom of a $6 globe at Target? Why it would is you do on that? globes in Target? Seriously. Every time, every I've globe. I've seen it. Every, I, and, <laughs> I know I maybe maybe of course I wasn't looking back in the day, but but now that I am, I mean it's on the bottom of every single globe, with the exception of the actual school globes, which you can buy at like Office Max and stuff like that, or wherever you buy them. But anything that that isn't a full blown thing, like eight inch, inches wide, they all have that sticker on the bottom. Why? Why? Because somebody's going to go on a boat trip and use this stupid little glow. It's like, <laughs> we're lost. We can't find it. <laughs> Anytime I go on a road trip, I bring a globe. That way I can get from my house to California with no problem. <laughs> Seriously. Has someone gone on a long distance trip and used one of these things and flown off course? Uh, well, there's always these sorts of things, uh, caveats on everything to protect somebody because of a lawyer. Yeah. Lawyers, guns and money. There we go. Yeah. Well, there's something else that's disturbing. That's disturbing the force, the flat earth force that I've noticed. And it's a couple of retailers that sell tennis shoes and women's clothing, cheap women's garbagey clothing. But everyone in America has heard of a women's clothing store called Forever 21. It's women's junior clothing, meaning 21 years old or under, but women of all ages shop there because the stuff's dirt cheap and disintegrates upon first wash. And it's, you know, if you're, almost 56 like me if you wear it you'll it's like a mini skirt or something it will be age inappropriate but it's maybe great for teens but whatever forever 21 put out something called the cosmic space collection and it's filled with pieces inspired by the moon landing the milky way and beyond it's got futuristic designs and reflective fabrics and plenty of nasa logos so they call it streetwear because it kind of looks like your casual stuff that you hang out, you know, hang out in your house with whatever when you're watching movies or, you know, online or something. But right. everything's got a NASA emblem on it. And everything's between $9 and $50, which is $9 to $50 too much for this garbage. We should buy a bunch of it and burn it. Burn it? <laughs> Just, really? Yeah. So Want to get some books uh, too? Yeah. Oh, well, the Cosmic Space Collection. It's so... Um, there's even these glasses that look like shields that are NASA glasses. It's just sickening actually. And it shows these like really hot looking chicks that are like, you know, 21, 17, 19 models wearing it, which makes it look very appealing, but it's full on programming for the youth. That's what they're doing. Not only that, we've got Nike coming up with some sneakers that are shiny and silvery and very futuristic. I like shiny things, but Anyway, they've got a, a new self-lacing sneaker called the Hyper Adapt BB. And what it is, is a NASA product. They say it, uh, it, it looks straight out of a NASA brochure from the 1970s. 
uh, a couple of ultra modern sneakers that they've made. It comes from the Japanese sportswear brand Asics and the French fashion label Harmony Paris, and they've come together to make these sneakers. And um, anyway, it's all more space programming. So they're getting the guys or maybe the women with the Nike stuff and they're getting the young women with the, uh, the forever 21 stuff. And those are just two companies I came across you yourself while browsing online for who knows what probably have found other NASA emblazoned things. I've seen people on YouTube videos, they're not even flat earth videos. Um, you know, they're just videos outside of our realm here, you know, like a, like a vegan video or a, I don't know what, any, any video, life advice video where people are wearing NASA shirts. No, I don't mean the NADA shirts with the logo, but it says NADA instead of NASA or a, a cute, you know, flat earthy play on the NASA logo. No, I'm talking about full on regular NASA shirts because they're sold in very popular retail stores like Urban Outfitters that are geared toward younger people. And, um, you know, I've been around Houston just going to the grocery store, going to Whole Foods to get some stuff. And I see people wearing, well, from far away, it looks like they're wearing a not a shirt and I think my people but then I'm sorely disappointed when I realize it's actually a NASA shirt and they're wearing it non-ironically and it's so disappointing yes I agree with everything you just said <laughs> as well you should since it's my show um, <laughs> <laughs> I have nice. the ejector I have the ejector seat right here I could oh. <laughs> um, one more thing about the whole challenger disaster you know sports, I don't. College football, Les Miles. Sports ball. He, he is in the new movie about the Challenger disaster. Did you know that? There's a movie about the Challenger disaster? Yeah, there is. Well, you know, we had First Man come out about Apollo, and that puts... Why would you, why would you do it 33 your, years later? Oh, Well, guess why? Uh, Programming the youth who well, might start waking exactly. up now. <laughs> why not do it in 2016? Or... I don't know, 10 years later because, or because we're or a few here. years later. Come because on. We are here. We're loud and proud. <laughs> anyway, Les Miles, um, he is a, a Kansas coach, Kansas City coach. Um, and he is uh, in the Challenger disaster film. So, hmm. uh, but, you know, first man that came out didn't do well at the box office, spent a lot of money to make that thing. They spent more than they, they earned, which is nice. But that puts to bed one of your clues where you said they've never made any movies about uh, about the moon landing. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. But at least they finally did three, three and a half years later. I mean, it's date time stamped. So actually, I'm still good because I said, look, it never happened. And that way, if anyone had any doubt, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, First Man came out at the end of 2018. But they didn't have to they didn't make it because they were looking for money. They made it because the anniversary of Apollo is happening right now mm -hmm. which is like look you, you somebody's got to make a movie so you better get that thing out there and so they did neil armstrong he already passed away and uh and the production was well it wasn't exactly american now was it it was made by a canadian production team canadian director canadian actor and they removed the american flag from it that's so weird well it's less expensive to make films in canada well no no, no, no. removing the american flag from it. well of course yes yeah i get it and canadian actor is like well look it, both Ryans are Canadian. Ryan Gosling. We love you, Canada. I actually Reynolds. love Canada. So, I oh, can Canada, Canada makes some <laughs> wonderful actors. There's some some fantastic people that are up there. Look, I love uh, Canada. It's a, it's a great American suburb. But at the it same, it really time, is. I always forget. You know, the last minute, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I need to I need to bring my passport because to me, it's it's America. But it's well, America. well, and, uh, and before 9/11, you didn't have to bring a passport. That's mm. how casual it was. Seriously, mm -hmm. I'm I'm right next to the Canadian border up here. Yeah, I went and to Montreal prior to 9-11 without a passport. So. Yeah, you could drive up there. Just show them your driver's license. Got any guns? No. I lived <laughs> in know? Michigan, and we would drive from Michigan over the border because it's really close, and right. that would be just a thing you do if you wanted to go and run. Oh, yeah. Niagara Falls. High how many people had girlfriends in Niagara Falls? None of them, but they still use the excuse. <laughs> the the point is was that, that to go to the strip clubs is what you're trying to say the, the because in clubs? michigan it was well known that young boys could drive across the border and go to canada and go to uh the strip clubs that were right there which were uh, nude strip clubs which they didn't have in, in 18 18 and under 
probably. I don't really know the age. Whatever. Not, but the point is, when you go up to Canada, if anyone hasn't been up to Canada, I highly recommend it. Although if you go to the western side of Canada, up near Vancouver, otherwise known as Van to the locals, really? uh, it's basically, you. if you were blindfolded and, and woke up there, you would never know you weren't in America because the accents are identical to West Coast. 90% uh, of the products are uh, American. It's there's just a few things that are out of the way that are different, like um, Tim Hortons. There's a lot of hockey references here and there. Seriously, they're big into cheese, and um, they have potato chips flavors that are different than ours. They have like dill pickle. Oh, I had that when you and I were together when we went to the uh, screening of Behind the Curve. Notice my yes role. When we were I in did Toronto, have dill pickle flavored chips. Potato I chips, think. yeah. I think, or or did we just talk about getting them? And Toronto, I think honestly, I blacked that out. Might as well be American because Toronto actually has teams that play in American leagues. They have a, a NBA basketball team. They have a Major League Baseball team. They do not have a football team, which is a little weird, but whatever. Anyway, so what am I getting out of here? Oh, I'm sorry, Canadian. So so Canada makes this. Canadian. But no, no, no. It wasn't. <laughs> The director, they were really good about this because like Fox News is all over this. You know, Fox News wave the flag, go team. And they were saying, why, why didn't you include the American flag in, in the freaking movie? And they said, well, because the moon mission was a human achievement, not a uh, ignore that phone. That's the agency. The, it's a human achievement, not a an American achievement. And that's when I chimed in. I said, no, 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 no. If anyone deserves to uh take the credit for faking the moon landing it should be the americans you know and they said no 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 it's you know would they almost put a un flag up there instead of the american flag i'm See, going that's, i mean that's crazy we all know the whole moon landing was fake however if you're going to make a movie about it and you're going to believe that it's true and you're going to make it for the mainstream right. public at least put the american like flag in it that's what supposedly it's, occurred it's the freaking americans you didn't see canadians in those crews <laughs> so, you didn't see so it was what, all... wait, what's the real reason they did it then? We know that what they're saying, but is there some sort of weird reason that they wouldn't put? Oh, them... you mean why? Why they put like did that the behind movie? the no, scenes? Because they were trying to be politically. Because nowadays, for the last oh god, twenty. I trust hate me, anything. For the last twenty correct. years, movies that are made in America are made with a secondary market in mind, the world mm -hmm. market. And when you're doing the world market. It's not you have to cater to them, but you can't do a lot of rah rah American. Okay, so stuff. why didn't they put a bunch of female astronauts landing or something ridiculous like well, that? Well, because a lot there's a lot of cultures and outside how about some of the transgender or just well, like no, because we haven't we haven't reached you know, oh, okay, okay, first feminist. Don't, don't, it's, I mean, if you're gonna make it, no, no, I know that, and they've tried to do that with different franchises: Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Doctor Who. I mean, they, yeah, they have blown franchises out of the water, mostly because of bad writing, but they tried to introduce a lot of uh, SJW agendas into that. We won't get into that right now. With that particular movie, with the, the whole moon landing thing, there's only so much you could do. Look, it's an all it's an all white cast, all guy, all American. The most you could hope for is to downplay the America angle. So they did. So they so because you don't want to. You don't want to rub it in. Remember, if you're American, and you're still pushing this narrative. It's like, oh, yeah, we did it. Nobody else did it. It's not like we were there first and other people followed. We're the only ones that were ever there. So you don't want to rub their noses in. How much of a world market are you going to get in? How many How much, How much? many people are going to watch that in China? I sound like Trump when I say this. In China. <laughs> in China, there are not going to be a lot of people watching if you're going to be waving the flag in front of their face. So you make it. You say, well, it's a human achievement. It's a human. You know, it's like, Really? Because that's not what we said when we put it on the cover of Time magazine and we were, you know, giving the finger to the Russians. And National Geographic. And National Grown. Geographic. You know, I don't like flags either. I'm telling everybody what I don't like today. I, I do like vodka, obviously. But I don't well, like flags. Good. I don't like that sort of thing. And I don't like laws. So what does that make me? Don't like what? Laws. We spoke about that earlier. I said legalize everything, and I don't like flags. I don't like this country or that country. I like countries having their own vibe, uh, their own you know foods and da, da da da. But I don't like flags and people believing that their country's better than the others and and all of that. What are you doing the whole Ferris Bueller thing on me? I don't believe in isms. I believe in myself. Type of thing. Wow. Yes. Hmm. And not just myself, ourselves. John Lennon said that. He did. I didn't know. That was, that was his quote. Didn't know. Didn't know. Yeah.
Yeah, go figure. Anyway, so the point is, is that the moon landing, we're, we're, we pitched it as a human achievement, try to downplay the American thing, and they got away with it because if it would have been a completely American production team, it would have been unforgivable. But because it was Canadian, it's like, all right, fine, whatever you guys are going to do. And so that was it. And hopefully they won't make any clones. Remember, most of the Hollywood stuff is done in twos. And I don't think we're going to see another first man movie, hopefully. Cross my fingers. Well, maybe that and the Challenger Disaster movie are the two like coming out at the same Where time. Where is this challenge? Who is making this Challenger Disaster? I don't know. I just heard about it. And again, it it's so far Less after the fact. Is, look, the, the moon mission is one thing, because that was burned into people's psyches. The Challenger Disaster, there's a lot of people. Seriously, you ask the average person on the street, uh, fine. One, they're not going to be able to name any of the people that are on it. Uh, which is different from the, all the Apollo movies. But the second thing is, uh, tell me, you know, what year was it? You know, the average person isn't going to remember that either. So whatever. Well, we all know that Richard Milhouse Nixon in 1969 called the moon on a phone, a dial phone. Plugged well, into it was wall. routed through. That's what they say. Right. But do you think that Richard Nixon knew... No that the routing through was a lie and that or do you i don't think he knew well don't have to tell him right Again, exactly uh, it's an, uh, people, it's a, it was above his pay grade that's what i think one of the biggest you want to call it a lie or if it's inadvertent or just something we take for granted thing that's been in media forever and that is the president of the united states is the most powerful man in the world by the way i said a dial phone it was a push button phone sorry excuse me dial tone <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah, put just yeah, straight like, up push button, not, not a rotary dial, not a rotary dial phone. No, it was, it was Dan, actually, if you're old enough to remember rotary dial, I had that as a young person. Um, well, my parents did anyway. It was avocado green as well, which adds yeah. an element. Yeah, they only came in several cool several colors: that <laughs> yeah. brownish, or well, maroon, avocado green, mm -hmm. oh, this a thing. creamy beige. That yeah, creamy old. beige. Yeah. Yeah, it was dated like right new out of the box. It was dated. <laughs> exactly. And people back then used to have, you could go furnish your brand new home with uh, appliances that would also be in those colors, avocado green refrigerator. Right. And now yeah. it's cool to have those sorts of things. And other companies, brand new companies have remade those items Kitchy, for a retro look. As it were. Kitchy. Yeah. Mm. The... Um uh, well, I'm sorry. No, no, you don't. The most powerful man in the world we have portrayed for the longest time in, in television and movies and books has been the president of the United States. And it's like, wait, I thought it was Matt Powerland. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and Matt Powerland. Uh, and, and in fact, even one of my favorite movies, uh, The Dead Zone, the book by Stephen King that was turned into a movie starring Christopher Walken and, and uh, Martin Sheen. Um, it, it, Martin Sheen could like, pre he, he launched a World War Three on his own. He basically, you know, brought in the general and said, put your hand here. It was basically like a two guy operation. Like the president could wake up in the middle of the night and push the button. And that was the narrative we were portraying to people for the better part of all the 80s, which was, you know, that you know Ronald Reagan could just wake up out of a nightmare and start World War III. It's like, no, the president of the United States is literally just a guy who reads a teleprompter. That's all he does. He doesn't get to do anything. And yet we keep putting that, you know, like the front, it's, it's even worse than a front man in the band. At least the front man in the band, you know, they usually write the songs, they sing the lyrics and stuff. The president just gets up on a podium. There are many, many levels above the president of the United States. President of the United States is just the guy that you get to yell at if you're not happy. Figurehead. That's it. He's literally a figurehead. That's all he gets to do is if you want to blame something about the country, you get to say you get to blame who is in office and his party. Now, right. of course, your average person is also going to say, well, of course, you know, he's got cabinet members and he's got all these different positions he hires for. And it's a group decision. It's like, yeah, but it's even more than that. It can there be vetoed levels. on a much, much higher level with by people we don't even know. Exactly. The first rule, please, everybody here, do not forget this. The first rule of power has not changed in thousands of years. The first rule of power is stay hidden. Stay hidden. That's it. Which is, if and, and the, the longer version of that is, uh, the first rule of power is never put yourself in a position to be overthrown. Whereas the, the masses, and there's a lot of them out there, if you don't want them to come at you with uh, pitchforks and torches, you can't let them know you're there. That's the best way to stay in power. And that is they can't overthrow you if they don't know who you are. Therefore, you just put somebody in power that you want. It's like, oh, yeah, go get that guy. He's horrible. Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Yeah, probably. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm in a little ranty mood today.
Yeah, me too, actually. I don't know why. Um, been taking pics is in the live chat. And, you know, I was talking about laws and legalize everything. I mean, you know, I'm being facetious, kind of, but kind of not. And everyone who's with me on that understands. Uh, been taking pics says laws didn't help her when her place was robbed. We've all been in situations where things have happened where the law didn't help us at all. In fact, it became a stumbling block to real justice. So basic laws are for lack of a better word necessary just basically uh, leave me alone and let me do what i want and if yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. is a good person which maybe they're not then everything will work out in the end and like, maybe that's a very uh, you, uh utopian view but people maybe. people think and maybe even you think this but I, I again because you know never married have never had kids a lot of free time in my hands oh, my or mind. build fences everywhere and everyone be armed you know, so I guess that could also work. That seems, uh, the militant that seems, seems sad in a way. The, that's very ends end timesy. Yeah, that's end timesy. But think of it this way, and and I know people go against the police at all. And no one likes being told what to do, and and no one likes having someone pull well, over. Some people like being told what to do. Well, that that's a whole. Not. There's a that's actually a thing. We won't get into <laughs> they that. Pay for that. <laughs> it's like a little S and M. The uh, no no so. I, I, but, but you know, when a cop pulls you Star over, gods, I'm looking at you. <laughs> when a cop pulls you over, you feel bad, right? You're feeling like, oh, what did I do? And you feel hopeless. And you're like, oh, I'm not in control. This person has total control over my life. But you got to remember that law enforcement is there for a reason. And that is if you don't, it, it, and people say, well, it's a necessary evil. And I go, no, it's not even a necessary evil. It's just necessary. Here's why. If you don't, and people, trust me, it happens it, when any any particular group, country has been colonized over the last thousand years, this happens. And that is, if you don't have a law enforcement body in place at all, it's the bad side of people takes over. And well, that is, you know, you know, this is true. That there's an old saying, I'm going to use a movie quote here, and that is, the people are only good as the system allows them to be. And that is, unless people, because you, it's mostly men, women get a pass. Oh, and no, women is, can be horrible as well. Oh, trust me. If you if you're ki if you think I'm kidding, ask why we have locks on every single thing we own. I mean, there are so many locks but out there. Do locks promote people being devious in some strange way. Oh, good. Then turn unlock everything. I Go know. ahead. Let's see how long that well, goes. Where for you. you live, you don't lock doors. Yeah, where that's I different. live, I do. We're, we're I close live in to the Canada. City. Canada doesn't lock doors as much. Mm -hmm. That is true. America though is is bad, and that is if you have a class. And not to, I'm not going to preach the class system, but once, once a system gets divided into classes, the lower classes, uh, or people that don't, what do you want to say lower classes? I won't even go, go that. Yeah, that people sounds that, People that think they are owed, the world owes them. They will take. Yes, men. it's true. They will. They will. They will take. Um, remember, I used women, to women. I mean, I want to say women too. Well, not as much. It's it's okay. a different. We'll we'll talk about that offline. But the like I worked in the time and attendance industry, right? You know, time clocks. And that was the reason why we installed digital time clocks into factories and all that. And that is because people will lie on their time cards all day long. They'll get and other is, people to punch them in. Or have people punch them in. They mm -hmm. will. And that is because they if they feel they're not getting paid enough, they will find a way to compensate until they feel they've gotten their share. They'll and steal staplers and other office supplies. They will. They'll steal everything. The in the survival guide, and I know I gave you a copy uh, yes. that I that I wrote, Empty Shelves. When if you've watched anything like from the uh we, we won't even use Katrina. Katrina was too obvious. Go back a few years before that, and that was the Northridge or earthquake in California, which was, and then people didn't realize this, and that was the cameras, the security cameras in the mall had battery powered. They were battery powered. So when the power went out, when they people knew it's different, and, and sorry, not to go off on a rant here. It's one Please thing do. when the power goes out, but it's another thing when the power goes out and you know why the power went out. And so when the when they all of a sudden, you know, rumble, 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 things shake, windows break, and then all of a sudden the power goes out. Everybody realized that that one, in same instant, it's like, you know what? There's nobody watching us and there aren't nearly enough cops to go around. And they looted instantly. I mean, within 10 seconds, people were just looting the malls with reckless abandon. And the cameras caught all this stuff. And that is because deep in people's hearts, you know, they we covet, you know. You know yes. And envy is one of the seven deadly. And th it's everywhere. And people, the only reason we're not, not robbing our neighbors blind is because we can't because it's against the law sorry that's my little rant about laws it's got it's, there's got to be some rules in place 
Otherwise, uh, the human species would just tear itself apart. There you go. Okay, so I don't know. Some laws? <laughs> Not there you go. all well, laws so abolished? It, well, that's just How it. How about this? There's too it, many laws. All right. It starts out, you know, as a few commandments. Then next, you know, people, the lawyers get involved and it starts branching mm -hmm. out and branching out. And, and rich create laws to benefit themselves. And, you know, on, on Wednesdays, we wear pink becomes a law or something crazy like that. Um, I was in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina in uh, 2005, in August, actually. I lived there in the French Quarter, and I didn't evacuate, although my mother, who was alive back then, said, well, you know, you should leave. And I said, oh, you know, every, every hurricane, you know, I leave, and then I'm on the road with my cats, and we have to stay at a really sleazy, cheap motel, like on the highway, because it's all jammed up. People are running out of gas. It's a hassle, and nothing happens. And then you drive back home in this horrible traffic, and you're it's just a mess. And so I said, I'm not leaving for this one. And she said, it looks bad. And I didn't listen to my mom. And thank goodness too, because she recommended I go to the Superdome and oh, thank God stay there. Know. And later that became a huge disaster. I'm not a person to, you know, go with large groups at all, period. So anyway, I just hunkered down at home in the French Quarter in my place and everything was fine. I rode the storm out. My cats were fine. Not a drop of water got in my place. Nothing was flooded. Uh, no window leaks. Fine. The whole building was fine because the French Quarter is the highest elevation within the area that was hit by the um, hurricane. But a couple days later, I did leave because I saw looting happening. Yeah. And uh, I, I walked because I parked my car at a, a place called Canal Place, which was a nice shopping center with the Saks Fifth Avenue, and they had a multi-story parking garage. So I thought, well, if there's any flooding, I'm going to park my car on like the third floor. That way it'll be protected and it won't flood or anything, which was smart. But there wasn't any flooding. So I walked to get my car. And as I walked, all these daiquiri shops through the French Quarter uh, were being looted. People were smashing the glass and police were right there. And also people were smashing and looting Brooks Brothers, a very conservative uh, clothing store where, you know, the people that were looting Brooks Brothers, I, I don't know. I mean, they were wearing jeans and T-shirts, but they were, you know, they were grabbing um, silk scarves and, you know, button down shirts and ties. And it was crazy to watch this mania happen. But right. there weren't cameras, just like what you said. Right. People just took that opportunity. And maybe all along they wanted in on those places, but couldn't because laws were in place. But it became very lawless there. And I've told this story several times. By the way, I hear an echo. Um, I've told the story several times about somebody knocking on the door of my place on the second day of my three days after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 in New Orleans. Knock on the door. And I thought, by the way, there was no power. It was hot as heck. It was August. And, you know, no power. And then they turned the water off. And I'm like, I'm leaving tomorrow at night, all sorts of crazy noises. So I was getting a little bit frightened, but I was in a highly secured building, knock on the door. So I'm like, hello, who is it? You know, I'm not opening the door. And it was a guy who was security for the building. He said, I want you to know, Miss Patricia, that they've opened Walmart and you can go get whatever you want. And I thought, well, I don't shop at Walmart, but that's good news. That means the power's coming back on. Walmart's open, then the rest of the city, the power will be back and everything will be great again. So I got in my car and drove to Walmart, which was kind of far away. On the road, there were uh, boards with nails sticking out and all. I had to you know, make sure not to pop my tires because where would I get tires fixed? And I got to Walmart, and pulled up, and the police were there in cars with the red lights flashing parked, just leaning against them, you know, like chewing on a stick, you know, watching the situation calmly as people smashed the doors, broke all the glass cases with the horrible cheap Walmart jewelry, stole everything, got big shopping carts or buggies as they call them in New Orleans and filled them with TVs and any electronic equipment. And people were like grabbing food. And I was there watching. And I said to myself, I can't believe this is happening. That was the first thing I thought. Second thing I thought was, I got to get the heck out of here. Third thing I thought is, wow, I'll never have the chance to loot again. So I stole a small bottle of cranberry juice that was laying on the ground, <laughs> sealed, took it with me, got in my car, drove back home, started packing up and left the city right after that. So I've, I've looted. It was, on, it, was on the, it was in the parking lot? <laughs> well, because the doors were smashed open, there was just stuff all over the ground. So, you know, I just took But even you missed I looted. Even you. But I looted to say I looted. I mean, I know the whole store would have been written off as 
you know. Oh, huge, yeah, massive. I didn't go there, loot, and I'm, I'm and I know that I, I have heard. I didn't see and witness anything. Car dealerships had the same thing happen. All the other stores too. I, I got out. Oh, don't get me started on that. The one of the most famous stories from with Katrina. the police officers. Yeah, there was a yeah. police department that figured out that there was going to be a Cadillac dealership that was going to be swamped in a matter of hours. And so what they did was they took, you know, they went there, they broke into the key locker, grabbed cars and started driving cars outside of town. And they figured they were just going to be like, write them off. They were, you know, destroyed in the flood, but they couldn't figure out how to do it. And they were caught and they've driven like 40 cars, I think, out of town. I mean, that was oh, a crazy. lot of money. Now, yeah, everybody yeah. has heard that New Orleans is corrupt, and it is one of those Look, it's cities. not just New Orleans. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's I mean, the at night uh, where, and I don't know if you were anywhere near, but I mean, there were police, uh, there was places that the police wouldn't even go at night. Yeah, I wasn't near any of that. And I never saw any of the flooding happening that happened later. My area never flooded, but yeah. I know that surrounding areas when the levee broke did. But sure. yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's a flat earth tie into all that with the water and the levee, but sure. And that is where it is. <laughs> the, 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 here's, here's the tie in it's loose, but it'll work. And that is the survival guide that I wrote. And I give oh, it on strange <laughs> world and the, and the Q and a shows the survival guide. I wrote that you guys, if anyone wants a free survival guide. All you have to do is email me at uh, m sergeant 23 at comcast.net. It's called empty shelves. I wrote it because of Katrina. I literally was so angry that nobody was prepped for anything uh, that it's like, you know what? I'm going to write a guide just for Americans and I'm going to show you. You don't even have to. You don't have to stock a single thing. Just follow my guide. You got a chance of making out making it out alive. And so and I've handed out thousands of those things now. So if anyone wants one, just email me. I know I've got it. And I was like a mini prepper didn't have guns or anything when I lived in New Orleans I had all sorts of food I had everything I needed um and I had the ability to leave car ready to go sure but, you know that's what you need but I hadn't filled my car completely up with gas before the hurricane big mistake because as I left with my cats books personal papers and some clothes locking my place up to come get that stuff later hoping nobody would break in right. I drove and drove and because there was no internet there was no way to see where the disaster aspect of the hurricane ends and real civilization <laughs> exists where power will be on. I just drove hoping for the best, hoping that I wouldn't run out of gas. I didn't even put my air conditioning on and it was August. It was hot in the South. I just kept driving. And finally, you know, I, I reached an area where there was power and everything was fine, but I could have run out of gas. Yeah. And there I am a woman much younger than I am now alone in a nice vehicle with cats. What do you think would have happened to me? Probably nothing good. Many people are thinking, why didn't you run out of gas? <laughs> well, Here's when it comes to the police and when it comes to, you know, the police stealing those, those Cadillacs from the dealership, as you had mentioned, um, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and power for, uh, to that end, uh, we are dependent more and more every year on our electronic life. And yes. that and we you have no idea unless I don't know when the last time anyone's been in a true power outage. I don't know your phone number. How about that? Do you know mine? Meaning if I lost oh, it, I don't have it saved. Most of us don't know each other's phone number. I don't know how to get from point A to point B, you know, outside of my general area without my ground positioning system, the GPS. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are very, very dependent on I've been in several cities across the country when the power's gone out and P it doesn't go well <laughs> hmm. people people are not prepared and i you know that's that's what my guide's about it's like look please you know help yourselves i mean look you're you're it's hypocritical not to be a little bit prepped because look you buy insurance for everything right we have life insurance we have home we have auto we have you know dental and whatever we have tons and tons of insurance and yet look don't spend spend 200 bucks and get some canned food, water, and some flashlights, and put them in a corner somewhere, and forget about it. And then you don't. Then you can sleep a little easier, or don't. Right. Right. And then you can think about me when it happens, and you go, "Oh wow, Mark Rogers actually talked about that." Right. But having all that's great until a certain amount of time goes by where the quote unquote natives get restless, meaning the unprepared people. And what are they going to do? They're going to go house to house, break doors down, and take oh. what you've got. And oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I. I 
what can I you have, do? I have talked to, well. Uh, Not much. I mean, if you have a gun, I mean, what are you going to do? Continually shoot people? I mean, that's crazy. Oh, Eventually, right. they're going to take your possessions. They're going to take, they're going to shoot and eat your pets. Realistically, it, it, that's what will happen. Yeah, and I don't want to get into that too much because it's kind of sad. It yeah. does become a dog eat dog world. Uh, literally or a man eat dog world. Both literally and metaphorically. Uh, but it's but it's true, uh, and that is I've talked to too many people. And I say, why haven't you prepped, right? And they go, I have. I go, really? What'd you do? And they go, I got a gun. I go, and your plan is, or I'm just going to take it, take what right. I need. It's like, great, you're going to do what every movie, you know, well, you can only have so many of those guys running around before, you know. If you like, live near a big city like I do, Houston, third largest city in the United States, you're yeah. toast. Prep all you want. You're just like making a nice collection for some opportunists to take later. You might as well just like put it on a vehicle with and get keys <laughs> ready <laughs> and just when, hand it to people. <laughs> when I was doing research for the manual, I thought it was interesting because when the, the bulk food stores opened up, you know, like Costco and Sam's Club oh, yeah. and, and stuff like that, I found out that city governments re- um, uh, redid their their emergency plans to where what happens a lot of people don't know this and that is if if the town is big enough the special weapons team the SWAT team they go immediately to Costco they shut the doors and they implement city government from there a lot of people don't know this I'm going wow I go <gasps> I go I accept there's a flaw in that logic and that is, and it makes sense, right? Because the initial, it makes sense. It's like, okay, it's a concrete building, steel doors, right? No one's getting in. Uh, all you need really is armed men and hopefully a lot of bullets. And here's why because eventually the people want not to get off on a, a whole apocalypse type thing, but after people loot all the normal stores, you know, whatever the Kroger's and Safeway and whatever, once they loot those, it all of a sudden everyone will think about it at the same time. It's like, Dude, why aren't we at Costco right now? <laughs> and then everyone drives. You can imagine like a thousand, yeah. two thousand people in a Costco parking lot, right? Mad Max style caravanning. Oh yeah, but the problem is, is that the cops are already inside, so they can't leave, and the people can't get in. So it becomes this weird standoff. And uh, it's, yeah, it's it's. I, so I like went over in the manual about tactics. It's like okay, what could happen? What might happen? And uh, yeah, so once the government officials get in there, that's that's it. That's they're trapped. It, the, both sides are doomed. So on day five of any huge emergency, if you know it's a huge one, go loot immediately, silently. Yeah, yeah, that's that was part of my manual, which is yeah, right. you, you, you know the manual. Yeah, that's is, why I said it. It's pretty much what you said. You get ahead of everybody. It's like you loot anything that's obscure as quickly as possible and hope for the best, basically. And I tell you little little hidden spots where things might be, and then it turns into Mad Max, and well, yeah. Then yeah. someone's eating your cats. Yeah, someone's <laughs> eating your cats. Well, not not <laughs> not my cats. They're not. I tasty. don't want to make you sad, right? Because yeah, it's I know. A I think about it. it's a little different nowadays than it was, but like the uh, the the nine hundred day siege, World War Two of uh, Stalingrad, which was over in the uh, uh, Russia, right? Uh, yeah anything no pets that got out alive yeah no and well not just pets anything that was moving on the streets basically was fair game within the first three weeks birds <sighs> rats anything anything that was walking around bugs yeah yikes yeah not fun well we should transition to something happy yeah like Hello to the live chat and hey, um, live chat. <laughs> all people, free people who's talking about the hundreds of sock accounts that are in here by a certain channel who will remain nameless. Bob of Globusters just came in and said, hey, guys, I don't know if I mentioned Musicians for Truth. You've been here for a while. Nice to see you. Dr. Michael Miller, PhD, is here who said something really cool earlier and I scrolled by it. Maybe I'll find it or not. I don't know. Escape from Costco starring Kurt Russell. Great one, Carl Steinbeck. Excellent. Oh, hello, Carl. Uh, yeah, Dr. Michael Miller, PhD, said this. Rotate and donate your prepped food every Thanksgiving. Hmm. It's a pretty good idea. I mean, it does last a bit longer than that, but the last thing you want if things really go down bad is to have all your prepped food 
it'd be rotted. It then, doesn't, but just so you know, because you know me, I've, I've, I've tasted and tested just about everything you can think of. Uh, it doesn't go bad. It's kind of gross to think about. But it on. is gross to think about. I know. I've tested MREs at nine years. I've done canned food at least eighteen months past its its date, but it's not expired. It's always mm -hmm. best buy. Oh yeah. So when you get it, starts to yeah, it starts to get a little canny little metallic -y, you know, afterwards, but I've had, I've never had to throw away a can of food. I've eaten all of it. So you can go quite a, quite a ways longer. Hello to Roxanne, the globalist denier. I'm so looking forward to meeting Roxanne and uh, all the globe live peeps over there. Uh, when I go to Amsterdam, she's going to be a, a speaker there. So, cool. um, yeah, can't wait for that. Let's talk about that. Okay. So we've got, uh, conferences the um conference in amsterdam coming in september and there's a video on my well, channel with uh, Dee and gary Charlie. so yeah you, you you start okay so the first one is going to be the question everything conference down in los angeles in less than a month it's going to be the february 22nd and 23rd can't uh, wait you and i are headed there you and i are going to be heading there and uh, we're going to question everything we are no one can that. stop us nope <laughs> try try it try stop us <laughs> Uh, and we're also, um, going to be doing a few things. We're coming a little bit early and, and leaving a little bit late. And what's the next one after that? The next one after that is New Zealand. Mm. New Zealand is going to be in April. Uh, I have been invited to New Zealand and, nice. uh, we're working out the details there. And so if anyone, go oh, to I'm, New sorry, Zealand. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That sounds so cool. Yeah. Let me punch that up, which is, sorry. That is, you can check that out at fenzexpo.co.nz, otherwise known as Flat Earth New Zealand Expo.co.nz. Uh, then the one after that, I believe, is is the UK one first or is the Amsterdam one first? Amsterdam September. Uh, UK is I, October. I don't know. I should look this up. Uh, uh, hang on. Let me let me punch this up real fast. How's Brexit going to play a role with the whole thing in the UK? Anyone I know? don't know. Hang on. UK 2019 I is... Think it's after. Sorry. Amsterdam. It is September, is September 13th to 15th. Oh, so it's before. Yeah. I knew that. Ugh. That's all right. So it's the, the so, vodka. So flat earth... Yeah. <laughs> what is... My one glass. Yeah. The size exactly. of a punch bowl. It... Look, look how huge it looks here. And then... Yeah. And I'm sorry, for the recap, what were you drinking? It was a Greyhound. It was organic um, grapefruit juice and Stoli vegan vodka. Is there a vodka that's not vegan? Well, some, I've said this before. Here's my one vegan comment for the show. Some alcohol of any sort, beer, wine, champagnes, mixed spirits like like vodka are filtered using a fish's swim bladder it's not a bladder like humans have for urine it's um it keeps them afloat buoyant actually um anyway yeah they kill the fish and they take this swim bladder out and they use it as a filter to filter out impurities but vegan mm -hmm. vodka doesn't use the fish's swim bladder it uses something else plant right. so. and uh, oh, if you want to know if your alcohol is vegan Go to um, Barnivore, B-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-E.com. There's an app, Barnivore.com. And you can just put in whatever the name is and click enter and it'll tell you. Got it. Oh, yeah. Amsterdam one is at the end of September. That's what Roxanne just said. Okay. And then... Go so England first, then Amsterdam. Okay. And then somewhere before that, I think, is Toronto. I don't know the details on Toronto yet. Oh, that's and right. And then... There's Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And then there's North Carolina, which is actually in Ape in May, the beginning of May, I think. Oh wow. Yeah. So that's a lot of I know. That's a lot. I mean yeah, 2019 is the year of the conventions. And those and and the meetups and mixers are just still continuing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundreds. And and these are just the ones that are English speaking. We don't even know the ones that are outside of our demographics. You know, what's what's happening in Asia, what's happening in Russia, what's happening in Africa, South America. They're all over Mexico. We don't know. They're doing their own thing. Yeah. And they're doing it. I was I was I was tentatively invited to something in Mexico, but I haven't heard yet. I just remember that just now. Very cool. Hmm. Mexico City of all places. Oh wow. 
I've heard Mexico City is not that nice. It's kind of uh, it smells like garbage. Now that's what I heard from somebody who visited there, but they're they're it's, really like a snobby person. So maybe they're just making a blanket statement. So. No, no. I mean, there are some cities that are just they're sprawling so and and generating so quickly that they're you know somewhere it's it's not what was the what's the cleanest city in the world? Singapore, is that right? Isn't that the city that if you spit gum out on the sidewalk, you get beaten? Or killed, one of the two. Right. Yeah. Or beaten so bad you wish you were killed. Exactly. <laughs> or is that just one of those hoax stories that came out? Nope, nope. In nope. The there are, look, I mean, they, they still cut off hands in some places and cane you in other places. Mm -hmm. And some people think American laws are and strict. In America, they just elect you as president. Oh. <laughs> Sick burn. Um, sick, sick burn. <laughs> nice. I want to uh, shout out Daryl Marvel, who was in our live chat earlier. Maybe he's still here. Uh, he recently went to LA to do an episode of Kev on Stage. Uh, the show Kev on Stage did was called Ask a, like Ask a Fireman, Ask a Police Officer, Ask a President, and this was Ask a Flat Earther. So he was the Flat Earther that was questioned. Nice. And uh, he had a good time. Saw a couple of pictures of him with Big Irish Jay Hollingsworth. And he was said... Uh, uh, Daryl said he was grateful for the opportunity to be on, so that is pretty cool. He's he's definitely uh, out out there doing things Excellent. and uh, putting a really good face on flat Earth. Awesome. If D Marble is going to be somewhere, you know, whatever he does is going to be positive for the community. I know some people hate the term community, but you know what I mean. I do. He's not going to. He won't shame us. <laughs> no, he will not. Ah, <sighs> uh, okay. Yeah. Presents. Anything else? Anything happening? I mean, anybody here have anything that they want to talk about that they're uh, they're doing that they've got coming up? I mean, Martin Leakey's in the chat. I mean, Martin, what have you got going on? Joey Sylvie's here who says hashtag F.E. Offensive, which is D Marvel's thing. Um, Joe Mama is here. Angel Raven 444 is here, too. So Roxanne was talking about the speaker's corner. They're going to keep oh, yeah? that going. Oh, I'm sorry. And the giant UK European tour with 69 cities. Yeah, it, gonna, it gonna opens stuck. up the uh, Amsterdam convention. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be epic. That's going to—I'm so happy that they're doing that, and uh, I—it's really, really cool. Makes me smile. Yeah, good people doing good things, and that's all that anybody who's in this awakening—that's all that's ever asked of anybody. If you—if you step up, you put your face, or not, you put your name or your pseudonym out there as a channel. You don't have to make videos. Just no. contribute something at all, even being in a live chat, you know, and 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 spurring other people on who are doing great things like D Marble or Roxanne or whomever, John Smith Globalize, Harry. Yeah, I mean those positive words of encouragement, those attaboys or atta girls, oh, you don't know how much they mean. They mean right. a lot. Because, you know, we've all seen the hit piece videos out there. I mean, you're scrolling through Flat Earth, Flat Earth, and you see one on somebody, you're like, Ugh, gosh, scroll right. on by. But if you see someone who you like, who you feel is doing good, go into their channel, go into their video and just say great video or how's it going so and so. And seeing those sorts of comments does make the video maker happy. Even if they're like a huge channel like Globusters, I'm sure Bob and, and Iru and all of them, Jaren, when they see a nice comment like that, I, I know even if they're a big channel, they feel happy. They feel wanted, they feel needed, they feel appreciated. And I think that's one of the main things any human being needs to mentally survive this world, especially this awakening, is to feel appreciated and needed. And you can do it with just a few words and a thumbs up. It's true. It's true. So what else? Anything? Nothing much? Um, that's it? I don't think I got anything at the moment. Yeah, There's either. A lot, of, a lot of stuff that's been happening. <laughs> Hello to uh, Celebrate Truth. Robbie D is here in the live chat too. Bunch of other people I didn't mention. Oh, uh, Ginger Sugarbush says, don't forget John the Morgal. I didn't mean to, but yeah, giving John the Morgal a shout out. He recently put a video out on his channel with his dog, which was really cute. Um, anyway, tomorrow, which is the 31st of January, um, I'm going to be doing a show with Nathan Oakley at 5 p.m., 
Eastern time as opposed oh, cool. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. And it's called Uncurved. So I'm going to be doing Secret Show Wednesdays with you and on Thursdays, a show with Nathan and I. And it'll be just an hour earlier than my normal time because he's in the UK and it's just so late for him to stay up. And Uncurved is a show where Nathan uh, tackles the science aspect and I tackle the community aspect, the social aspect of Flat Earth. And um, oh, I've got a show coming up on Friday too. Um, gosh, why am I, uh, why am I blanking? Oh, Friday, uh, Rodrigo Ferrare Nunez is going to be my guest. And he was on with us on our last secret show, Mark, talking about his analysis of behind the curve. And he's right. doing one on first man, that movie. And we're going to find out more about him and how, how he came to this awakening. Oh, cool. By the way, hello to Zulu one who's in the chat. Saw you here before. And Arthur Johnson, who says, woohoo, lots of shows. And um, I was speaking with Russian vids behind the scenes recently. And I was thinking of doing a show with Russian vids as well. I've done a couple with him and they're always popular. Nice. So maybe Excellent. we'll have Russian vids transvestigate me on air live. Cool. <laughs> hello to uh, Flat Earth Fokker, who's in our chat. Hey, there's D Marble again. And Anders Ace, hey, Wesley says Flat Earth News is here too. And Cat49. Um, so hello to everybody and goodbye to everybody. That pretty much, that pretty much wraps, wraps things up. Let's put a bow on this one. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I'm Patricia Steele. That's Mark Sargent. This has been episode 272 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, Flat Earth and Other Vodka Beverages. Until we meet again, keep it flat. Cheers. George Clooney, Hail Hydra. And all that jazz. <laughs>